Hello, it's Marek. Welcome to M Drives. Today I will be testing M2. However, what can be better than testing an M2? I know, testing two M2s. However, this one is a bit different as it's a competition. Although these cars look very similar, they actually are quite different, like engine, suspension, and some details. So let's jump into it and compare these two. But before we drive the cars, let's go through all of their differences in a bit more detail. Let's start with the engine. The original M2 is equipped in N55 inline 6 motor, delivering 365 horsepower and 465 Nm of torque, but it can deliver 500 Nm on overboost for up to 10 seconds. On the other side, M2 Competition is equipped in S55, which is the same engine you can find in M3 and M4 with two turbos. The other significant difference under the bonnet is the bracing. OG M2 has this black metal bracing, which doesn't look very pretty. M2 Competition, however, has this gorgeous looking carbon strut brace. There is also another aluminium brace which is present in the comp. Now we know what powers this beast, let's talk about the design. As despite these cars looking very similar, there is quite a few differences between both. M2 competition definitely looks slightly more modern. The front bumper was slightly redesigned to give it a bit more edgy and sharp styling, while the grille was completely changed as on the competition both nostrils are joined together. Original M2 definitely looks slightly older, as everything here just looks a bit more rounded and softer than in the comp. You can see a big difference here at the bottom of the front bumper when comp received an extra details. My M2 came with adaptive xenons with high beam assistance. From April 2017, facelifted M2 received LED lights as standard with adaptive LED icons available as an option. OG M2 never received proper M meters, however I changed mine to Auto ID to make them look like on the comp. They are not exactly the same, but they are close enough. Comp mirrors are definitely nicer, here with optional carbon caps. From the side profile, the cars are almost identical. OG M2 came with 437M wheels, which are forged and definitely lighter than those available in the comp. From the back, both cars look almost identical. For the LCI models, BMW introduced new LED lights, which are also present in competition models. As you can see, both cars had the lip spoilers changed to the carbon ones. To me, the biggest problem with competition model was the rear box, which is huge. As you can see, my mate painted it black to make it less visible. OG never received a proper M interior. The seats are the same as the M Sport seats in majority of 1 and 2 series cars. The only difference is the M logo at the back of the seat and the blue stitching. M2 competition received the same seats as in M3 and M4. They really look beautiful and they are much nicer to sit in. The Speedo in OG looks really classic while the OG LCI and M2 received this analog but digital looking dials. The central console also received an update, with the biggest difference being the driving mode. In the competition model you can change all the settings separately and the cars gained M1 and M2 buttons. The dash in the LCI and comps also look slicker and a bit more modern. Right, enough talking, let's go for a ride. Right, so uh, welcome Joe. Um, Joe and I met uh, about two years ago actually when I purchased uh, M2. Since then we went for quite a few drives together yeah. around the Oxydales etc. Um, but yeah, we decided to find out how different these two cars actually are because 
you know, although they look very similar, there is quite a few differences, like an engine. Many people say that OG is much harsher to drive, so that will be interesting to find out if that is actually true. And driving it back to back, especially in a stock form, uh, will give us the true picture, really. Uh, I think apart from sport cut, this car is pretty much mechanically stock. Yeah. And that's probably same as yours. You have stock cut, but your back box is modded. modded. Yeah. So yeah. Um, in terms of noise, they are, I would say, quite similar, although they sound different as well due to a different engine. Yeah. Right, so uh, Joe will drive my car first and he can give us his feedback on how this car compares to his comp and then we'll jump into Joe's car and find out um, how I will find it compared to my car. So over to you Joe. Cool, let's go. <laughs> it's uh, a while since I've driven a manual. <laughs> Straight away, the exhaust noise at the back, much louder. Okay. Much louder. Um, you don't hear any of that in mine. It's a lot more of a sort of grunty sort of noise as well. Not as, obviously not as toneful as this as well. Mm. This, is, this is nice. Yeah. Just take it uh, steady. <laughs> Don't worry, yeah. I left it in Sport Plus, um, but you can change it if you want. left right. whatever you want huh. even the indicator stalks different really yeah oh I mean the, the physically the indicator yeah. stalk yeah, yeah it's yeah. it has a bit different shape I think your looks a bit more modern it's kind of but you've got more the feedback edgy. as you press yours they're like a uh, whereas mine it sort of locks into place on a bumpy road it ions it quite yeah. nicely it, it starts working do whatever you can go yeah there. I really don't think I can't tell well, I mean, no, so I've only been in it two minutes but it doesn't feel any harsher than mine um, I don't think you've often said that when you at, at speed it mm. feels a lot more compliant what about the engine characteristic yeah, um, it's nice. You can see why people do go from comps back to OGs and, and switch around a little bit because obviously, I mean, I'm not, I've not managed to floor it anywhere, but it's, um, I don't feel like there's any real gap in power. You know, when we set off, it didn't feel sluggish at all. Mm. Um, obviously, it's slightly lighter as well, isn't it? So, yeah, I think yours DCT as well, so obviously there will be difference in the gearing and there will be difference in the weight. Your probably is about 100 kilos heavier Yeah. because of the gearbox and the differences in the engine, etc. Yeah. Yeah. I guess changing the gears also adds to, to yeah. a drama a bit. You forget, so I, I before the uh, M2 obviously I had the 140, that was auto but I had a manual um, Mark 7 GTI before that and uh, and you forget how yeah how engaging it is actually just changing gear it's been a few years now I think really makes you think because 
in mind you can get a bit lazy and just, yeah. just forget about the uh, having to shift. I mean, I completely get the reasons why people go with automatic, um, but to me, I just, because I drive this car mostly for fun, I would say. Yeah. Um, I rather live with the fact that I need to change these gears when I just drive it around, but then I'm I'm having real fun when when I'm having fun. Yeah. Um, rather than I mean I, I had a couple of um, automatics uh, from BMW as a courtesy car. So I lived with them for a week or two, yeah. and uh, although I really enjoyed it uh, on my daily during my daily driving, once I took it on this road and I tried to have some fun, I was missing something. Yeah. Um, yeah. They are so fast. Um, I mean, you just floor it and it just goes. Yeah. But to me, I was missing that gear changes. Yes. Yeah. The fact that you are choosing the, I don't know, I, I know you can use flappy paddles on the that helps. steering wheel. And I, use, I use that a lot in mine, um, to be fair. The uh, paddles. Partly for fear of the, uh, the dreaded uh, crank hub slip as well. <laughs> So this is pretty bumpy road, yeah. so it's a probably good test. It does, I can feel, uh, uh, when we did 30 through there, and just coming onto this, this, this does feel a little bit bumpier now, I would say. I couldn't really tell at first, um, but I would say now it does feel a little bit bumpier. It is nice having a gear, gear, uh, manual gear shift as well. It's, oh yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Well, you'll be able to, you'll probably uh, spot it better than me, really. Um, I feel like I'm excited just changing gears. And, <laughs> and, yeah, the Alcantara wheel's nice as well. So It's a very different experience, I would say. It's, uh, you get a lot more of the sound. Because uh, that's what people say. The yeah. comp is more refined. It's a more refined car. Yeah, yeah. and you lose a little bit of that, yeah, that raw edge. Say once you're up above sort of 30, it doesn't feel that that different to mine. I would say you've got less cabin rattles as well. Really? Yeah. Um, that's probably because I tackled some of them. Yeah. Um, so if you would start looking around the cabin, you would probably find a piece of papers and uh, um, and you know some stuff behind the trims to yeah. stop them from rattling. Unfortunately, I think both these cars just because they are so harsh. Um, to drive, the chassis is quite stiff as well. It just rattles it all the time, and all the time, um, yeah. Unfortunately, it, it is what it is. It's it's the most rattly car I ever had. Um, honestly, I thought M1 355 was bad. It, yeah. it it's nothing compared to M2. Um, honestly, I have pieces of paper bet between rear pillars and the trims um, <laughs> because otherwise it was creaking, you know. So this, yeah, I've gone all out for the. Uh, <laughs> you've done your own sound bending almost. Yeah. Speaking of one forty. One forty, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't yet got to that stage of going around and putting things in uh, trims. But the the seat rattle is so annoying on mine. You know, having the wider, <laughs> slightly wider seats and it touches all the. Yeah. Because I can't fit my hand down the side right. of the armrest. Um, and you'll you'll see for yourself in, in a minute. But um, it's uh, the rattles are bad. <laughs> Test loop really now. That's what I always do. I always take cars on yeah. that loop. Otherwise, um, I mean, obviously, the dash looks different. Yours bit, bit more modern, I guess. Um, yeah. The clocks, I think, it's a big difference. And to be honest, I mean, I, I can turn on the speed for you. However, it's much smaller than in yours. Yeah. Which I think it's um, that's what I'm missing. I would like to have, like in Audi, quite a big digital speedo in the middle. Yeah.
right? I tell you what, the first difference, the seat is harder. Mm. The bottom of the seat is it's noticeably harder than mine. Yeah. Mine feels spongy. Spongy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I must admit, I felt comfortable in that seat in yours, and I wasn't necessarily expecting to feel <laughs> more comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, your clocks are so much better than in mine. I mean, I I do kind of like the retro vibe of my clocks. Yeah. But I think in terms of how the clarity of the information you're getting from them, it's just so much better. Yeah. Um, otherwise. I think the difference in a console, it, it's not that, that big. Mm. Is this standard, this stitching here? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, because that looks nice. I guess it's not, it's not leather, but no. But it's it tries to look like a leather. Yeah, I've really, I, know, I haven't really ever noticed that, because my M140 was um, LCI. Okay. Two, was it? Or LCI, just LCI. Um, and that had the same thing here, this this layout. Yeah, the sitting feels so much different. It's not uncomfortable, but it's noticeably less comfy than mm. mine. Um, I think bolstering is the same, you can adjust it. Yeah. Um, that probably makes quite a difference in the... Because um, obviously this, if the suspension is softer in this, well, you're probably not going to notice it as much if you... Because the seat's so the hard. Because the seat's so hard, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that... To be honest, uh, I think that might be um, a positive thing because after driving um, that GT4 yeah. in Scotland and uh, with the carbon buckets and after uh, having a passenger drive in the in our mate's Lotus, I couldn't believe how much more feedback you're getting through the boom, through yeah. the seat yeah. when you have carbons, uh, when you have buckets um, because they don't have that padding so you're not moving that much and yeah. I think these seats will probably give you much more feedback than actually my f seats yeah. um, and I wouldn't mind to be honest actually have buckets but yeah more comfy buckets <laughs> not not like a proper proper uncom uncomfortable ones but um, yeah right okay so um, big difference obviously is that you can set everything separately here yeah um, and you've got your M1 and M2 buttons. Yeah. Right, okay, let's go. So yeah, if you um, pull a paddle, it'll go to manual, but it's in its kind of lazy, lazy gearbox mode at the minute. Stock really. Um, obviously, 
power and uh, settings wise. So, mm. yeah. Steering. I'm not sure, it feels very similar. Mm. As pointy as mine, I, I don't think there is much difference in it. I think that the big difference is the seat, to be honest. Yeah. I really do feel much more through my boom or yeah. all the little um, holes in the road. I can't really feel them in mine as much as I feel them here. Yeah. Um, but on a road like this, it feels very similar, doesn't it? In terms of general like jiggliness and movement in the chassis and things, I think it feels, yours felt similar to me anyway. set off um, so I think um, there is a slight difference however I have PS4 S's at the front yeah yeah uh, which will be slightly slightly softer yeah But I think this, you could feel the extra torque straight away. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, on a hot day, or, you know, the super sports yeah. are up there. It's, well, we're uh, in 10 degrees today, so we're below the kind of ideal temperatures for the tyres. Obviously, they will get warmer, um, and then they will work better. But anything below really 12, 14 degrees, mm. and they are they are quite they're too hard basically yeah feels weird being a passenger i don't think i've ever been <laughs> I, not very often been a passenger in this <laughs> so i'm in third gear yeah i think it feels the same in terms of bumps yeah on the lower i think the seat then will make a big difference yeah, yeah. i think so so the car moves still moves same as mine yeah Pretty much. 
much like in my car. There's not that much difference apart from obviously if my car would be a, a 2018 model, so the LCI one, yeah. um, I would have um, the speedos like yours, exactly yeah. the same ones. Yeah. Um, They've got LED headlights so on there, I think. A yes. few other things, yeah. Absolutely fine. It just—I don't think it sounds that exciting from the outside. No. Oh, I like this when you when you just when you just move it. Oh yeah, it's so jumpy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that first gear. Yeah, that when you slowly set off. Yeah. That low rumble. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and you get a few pops and stuff as well if you let it just. Uh, obviously, it's slightly modified. But... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't crack like yours does, so I don't think. It's a more popping than cr crack. Yeah, it's a different different kind of sound, but... No, I like it. I think the biggest difference to me actually is the seat. Yeah, Out which is quite a surprise. I, uh... Obviously the engine. Yeah. The engine is a, is a big difference too. Um, first gone through this little bridge the other way the car felt to me like it's slightly heavier like yeah. so it deals differently with the with the bumps on the road and um, and I think that's because of the weight yeah and it, it has different springs obviously but you feel the extra weight I think yeah, yeah I think um, so. but once you rev it it's it feels you know it feels absolutely fine it doesn't feel heavy anymore it's um but yeah it, it was the the first few hundred yards we we've done uh in this car i felt like it, it feels different mm. slightly different yours feels um I, and again it might be the, the slightly different tires on the front but i felt like the, the turning was a little bit little less just a bit better in yours to be fair okay um but it might be the 4s being in a better window than the super sports but I don't know. That that's the only difference really because like I said my the rears are uh is that neutral? Neutral. Yeah. So yeah the, the rears are we we've got the same rears, it's just the front I've got PS4S's. Mm. Which technically should make it a bit more numb mm. compared to Super Sports. True. Um But yeah, so I think there are some very small differences in how these cars behave on the road. However, they aren't really that big obviously the sound is different the power de delivery is slightly different in yours it definitely feels like the there is a bit more torque in there and um, but apart and, and the biggest I think yeah the biggest difference to me is the seat mm. it's definitely harder but you feel more through it which yeah. um, in terms of comfort I, I find them as comfortable as mine with the difference that the the bottom of the seat is just is just more less padded yeah and you feel more through it which i think in this type of car it's probably an advantage mm. um yeah. and you also feel although yeah. when i was driving i didn't feel it i i never feel those yeah yeah people, you, it's, people it's only say. when you it's only when you kind of like sit in them like that when you feel it and maybe yeah. maybe if you would go on track and you would sit more upright yeah maybe. they would hold you here yeah because your seat i think it's a little bit more to the back uh, than mine so maybe if you would have it on track a bit more kind of vertical more. Yeah, yeah um it would hold you better but other than that i don't really feel like the the seat holds me better no here again i think this ball steering is bit it's not bigger it's just a bit harder mm. it's not as soft as in mine mm. So I think that it probably feels a bit more bucketed than mine. Um, 
but it's not night and day I would say but it's a it's a difference you can definitely feel mm. and I'm not surprised why some people actually change the seats in OG to this seat yeah and to be honest if if it would be reasonably priced if I could get these seats for like I don't know it would probably be worth to me six seven hundred quid yeah I would get them but unfortunately usually they they go for about 12 1500 so yeah, that's yeah. just a bit too much mm. uh, just for the seats I rather have something else mechanical <laughs> done to the car um, but yeah thank you for this opportunity I think uh, right. hopefully this video will help um, some of you who are deciding between both cars I think like I said they are very similar uh, although there are visual differences and mechanical differences both cars I think are as exciting to drive motorbikes <laughs> uh, yeah they, they both as exciting to drive um, so I don't think you can go wrong with any of the cars I think it will come down more to the gearbox um, decision and um, do you like manual more or do you want to have a bit of comfort during your daily driving and uh, get DCT Obviously, it's the same gearbox in both cars, so there shouldn't be any differences in that terms. But yeah, other than that, I'm quite happy that um, I had this opportunity. Um, I know what the differences are now. Hopefully, this video will give you an insight of what they are and will help you to make an informative decision when you're buying one. Uh, so thank you again, Joe. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you soon in the next video when we go for a drive somewhere. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you shortly in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Do <laughs> we